The life cycle of a salmon begins when a female's nest of eggs are fertilized by male sperm. These fertilized eggs develop into embryos that later on hatch into tiny fish called alevins. Alevins are fish with a yolk sac still attached to them. The yolk sac serves as a food storage from where alevins are feed for months and grow in size. Eventually, the yolk sac is completely consumed and a new stage of development begins. The fish at this stage is called the fry. It is worth mentioning here that the mature salmon eventually head to the sea but at this stage they are still restricted in their movement to their natal stream where they were hatched. They may spend like one to two years in this area depending on the species before migrating out to sea. The fry regularly swim to the surface to fill their swim bladders with oxygen while feeding on other smaller organisms. The fry are very vulnerable to predators and hiding under locks, rocks and shade is crucial for survival. In the third stage, we are looking at the migration towards the sea. The fry grow into the salmon that begin their seaward migration. This stage is characterized by smolting and the development of scales that are silver colored. The young slots grow and transform, adapt, adapting. The young smoths grow and then transform, adapting to their new environment as they go along. Predators are act actively eliminating members of the group as they go. Only the fortunate ones will eventually get to the ocean. Life in the ocean. Some salmon end up in coastal waters while others migrate far uh, in search of feeding grounds. Some may end up spending one to seven years in the ocean. What is interesting about salmon is that they don't just end up in the ocean. Some of them end up back in their natal stream. This as may sound like a scene out of a movie, but it's actually true that salmon somehow return back to the exact streams where they were hatched. And it is unknown how they do that, but anecdotal evidence suggests that salmons are guided by scents and chemical cues to find their way back to where they started their lives. It is during the process that they in turn prepare for spawning. The journey is long and requires a lot of energy that is drawn from fat storage in their bodies. Apart from that which is reserved in the reproductive organs, the salmon taps into other fat reserves in its body as a source of energy to enable it to navigate this long journey. Male salmon during this time develop hooked noses that are called kype and these help them to fight and dominate their pairs. Children have seen a lot of scenes on TV where bears catch salmon in, salmons in rivers as they are migrating and jumping out of water. It is at this stage. Predators are very active during this time. The few that arrive at their final destination lay eggs that are fertilized and the whole process begins again. The eggs are laid in little depressions created by the female salmon. Once the eggs are laid inside, the female salmon covers them with gravel. The male and female will live here until they die and decompose and become food for other organisms within that ecosystem. One final thing to note is that with pollution on the rise and habitat destruction by humans, salmons are facing problems following their natural cycle to the end. Ecosystem disturbance by man is affecting this cycle to the extent that salmon populations across the globe are in great decline. Mankind needs to be actively involved in environmental protection to save the wild salmon. If you need more of these kind of resources, check, head over to the links below and click on those links and you'll be taken on a page where you can practice with a game on the life cycle of a fish and worksheets on the life cycle of a fish. Have fun.